Drums are at the core of my musical background. In fact, I started out on drums. But there were just too many moving parts to keep track of. Well, that's just another story. I just wanted to do a video about what I think are the greatest drum fills of all time. Now, this is not a countdown list. Uh, get out of here. I've never been good at quantifying things that I love. And besides, I already sound too much like pole falling in from number four to number one is wham. I think these are great drum fills, not so much for their technical proficiency as much as how they move me, how they're important, how they affected my life, and I wanted to tell you about them. So let's get started. This first one is from a drummer who's not considered to be a virtuoso by most, but I think he was the heartbeat behind one of the most badass bands ever. And you know what I'm talking about. And he played one of the most recognizable drum fills of rock. This is Frank Beard from ZZ Top's 1973 album, Tres Hombres. Oh, my God. Oh, This next one is actually two drum fills which bookend the outro of a song and is done by what I consider to be one of the best drummers ever. I was lucky enough to work with him years ago at his band studio in Charlottesville, Virginia when I was working on a project with Al Capone. Man, I need to make a video about that because it was just an incredible experience. From the Dave Matthews album, Under the Table and Dreaming is the incredible drumming of Carter Beaufort in Ants Marching. I love how he turns the beat around. This next one is not a fancy fill, but I've always thought it was an iconic fill. This is the Gap Band's 1980 hit, Burn Rubber On Me. All right, I think I got it now. Confused? I'll let Dave Grohl explain. If you listen to Nevermind, the Nirvana record, I pulled so much stuff from the Gap Band and Cameo and Tony Thompson on every one of those songs. All that. That's wow. old. It's old disco. That's all it is. <laughs> Can I not hear that? Nobody makes the connection. That's straight up Gap Band. I told Tony Thompson that I came to my house for a barbecue with somebody, and I was like, man, I just want to thank you because, you know, I owe so much. I've been ripping you off my whole life. He goes, I know. The band is Grand Funk Railroad, the song is We're an American Band, and the drummer is Don Brewer. This was produced by my hero, Todd Rundgren. Now, this was my jam back when I was 13 years old and living in Germany, but what's kind of strange is that, in spite of all their success, they weren't taken that seriously. But I think that's because they didn't take themselves that seriously. They were just a great band, having a good time, and doing great songs, and besides, I want some pants like that. This next one is by a guy that I don't see that many people talk about, which seems just really weird to me. Nigel Olsen has worked with B.B. King, Rod Stewart, Linda Ronstadt, Kenny Rogers, and a bunch of other people, and was briefly the drummer for Uriah Heep. But he's mostly known for being Elton John's drummer. Here's one of the greatest drum fills of all time from Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down On Me.
This next drum fill, is, well, it's actually four drum fills, is from a band that really influenced the way that I thought records should sound, especially in the clarity of the drums and bass. I used to reference this song when I was mixing rock records, and once back in the 90s, I was mixing something at the Old Tree Sound here in Atlanta. I was using this song as a reference when the owner walked in and said, they mixed that song on this console. What? Recorded in 1980 at Le Studio in Quebec and coming through the circuitry of the 11th SSL console ever made is, well, you know who this is. This next one's a little unusual because there's probably only five people in the world who've actually heard this drum fill. And that's because it hasn't been released yet. This is from a project I'm working on for an artist named Priska. The drummer is Mark Gerritsen, also known as Dog. Let's check it out. Wow. I'm going to play it without the vocals in there so you can hear the drums better. But I had just told him like, hey, dude, when you get there, I just want you to go crazy. And he did. And boy, I got a lot of tracks on this song. Hold on. <laughs> Make sure to check out Dog's band Risky Biscuit. They stream on Twitch three nights a week and they're incredible. I'll leave a link in the description. OK, here we go. Turn the vocals off. I am such a massive fan of this drummer. He's just, he's just incredible. I mean. This next one is by a band that was my favorite band when I was in high school. They were one of the most influential bands of the 20th century and were known for smashing their gear at the end of their shows. When my band played our high school variety show, we decided to cover this song that this drum fill is in. We were told by the people who put the variety show together that we could not do the full length of the song and we couldn't smash our instruments at the end of the song like this band would do. So we're like, mm, sure. But we decided not only would we do the full length of the song and smash our instruments, but that we would have a friend blow off the flash pot at the end right after we smashed our instruments. We did the song. I smashed my guitar. I had a cheap guitar for that. And after I smashed my guitar, as I'm turning my back, there's this big boosh. And I turn around and there's this massive mushroom cloud going up in the air. I didn't realize my friend had put way too much gunpowder in the flash pot. I ran out of there. My friend grabbed all the stuff that he'd made the flash pot out of. They had to evacuate the gym. There's a hole in the gymnasium floor. And when the principal finally catches up with us, he says, what happened? And we say, an amp blew up. From the Who's Won't Get Fooled Again, here's Keith Moon. And what's interesting about that band is the drummer Keith Moon never played his drum parts the same way twice, ever. Probably that drum fill on the record is the only time he ever played it that way. And if you check out this, this is from a live in-studio concert that inspired us to actually cover this song. Check this out. He actually comes in late on the drum fill. This next one is by a true drumming legend and considered to be one of the most influential drummers of all time. He was known for his technique and speed. Now, there's a couple interesting things about him. One is he never learned how to read music. And that was kind of unusual back then because he was playing in big bands with 
pretty complex arrangements. So what he would do is when they're having rehearsals to go over new arrangements, he'd bring another drummer who could read. He'd have that guy play through the part. He would sit in the audience and watch it and memorize the whole thing. And that was it. That's all he needed. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that he used something called traditional grip. Nowadays, most drummers use something called matched grip, you know, where they play like this. But he did traditional grip, which is how I learned because I played in marching band. And come to think of it, I, I didn't ever learn how to read music either. So I would just copy what the other drummers did. Or if I was playing glockenspiel, I'd just make up a part. Here's Buddy Rich with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra in 1943 playing Well Get It. That's amazing. <laughs> Here's another one from the same show. Wow. As I was looking for this video, I found another one from a different show where he does an extended drum solo and it's, it's amazing. It doesn't really fit into this video, but I'm gonna stick it at the end as a bonus. You should check it out. This last one is from a band out of Glasgow, Scotland. And actually, this song didn't appear on any of their albums till the Greatest Hits record years later. Now, that's because this song was from a movie soundtrack, and they thought it was just like some sort of side gig. In fact, they almost didn't even do the song because they didn't write it. And doing songs from movies wasn't as considered cool back then as it is now. But they were talked into it by Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders. She was married to the lead singer. She thought it was a good idea and it ended up becoming a massive hit for them. Now, I say this one for last because for me, this song represents a time in my life when I had my bands, I was gigging a lot, I was getting my career going, and this drum fill was like something was being launched. It was like a statement on how epic music can be, and being epic has always been my quest. From the Breakfast Club soundtrack, Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Mind. Get out of here! This is Mel Gaynor with his Simple Minds on Don't You Forget About Me. fun. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and be unique.